Hello everyone. Today I am going to continue our lesson on structure and functions of DNA and discuss about genes. The other day when we discussed about human DNA, we learned that only 2% of our DNA codes for proteins and RNA. This 2% of DNA codes for thousands of different proteins and RNA molecules. If we take a segment of DNA which codes for a particular protein or RNA molecule, we call this segment a gene. For example, if this segment of DNA codes for the protein albumin, we call it the albumin gene. If it codes for a tRNA molecule, then we call it a tRNA gene. Some of the genes which you have to very frequently discuss during your BDS program are shown here. Among the human genes, the tumor suppressor genes P53 and P retinoblastoma will be important for you because their mutations are associated with oral cancer. Then among the bacterial genes, the antibiotic resistant genes are important for you because these genes confer antibiotic resistance to bacteria and because of that, you will have problems in controlling bacterial infections in your patients. Then the bacterial virulent genes also are important for you since karyogenic bacteria with virulent genes will develop very severe dental caries and periodontopathic bacteria with virulent genes will develop very severe periodontitis. Then among viral genes HPV viral oncogenes will be important for you because they can deregulate the human cell cycle and cause cancer. Out of the human genes, P53 gene is very important because it's the most frequently mutated gene in oral cancer. So let's look at a very simple description of this gene. Can you understand this description? In order to understand the first statement in this description, you have to have an idea about the location of genes on chromosomes. Then to understand the second statement, you have to know about the structure of genes. Then. To understand the third and fourth statements, you have to know the scientific terms such as heterozygous, alleles and dominant. So this is what you are going to learn today children. A little while ago, we discussed what a gene is with some examples. Now let's learn how to identify the location of genes on chromosomes and how to identify the location of mutations on a gene and also some scientific terms used in describing genes and finally the functions of genes. If we are to identify the location of genes on a chromosome First, we have to observe the chromosomes. Can we observe them in an interface cell? No. So how can we observe the chromosomes? We have to get some nucleated cells such as white blood cells and let the cells divide. Then we have to stop the cell division at metaphase and stain with a dye such as Gimsa stain. Afterwards, we can observe them under the light microscope. Under the light microscope, 
the stained chromosomes will appear like this. You will see alternating light and dark bands on the chromosomes. In our chromosomes, the central constricted area is called the centromere. And the two ends of the chromosome are called telomeres. The short arm above the centromere is called the p-arm and the long arm below the centromere is called the q-arm. Since this is chromosome number 3, this arm is 3p and this arm is 3q. These alternating light and dark areas on the chromosomal arms are called chromosomal regions. They are numbered from centromeric end to the telomeric end. So in the P arm, they go as 3P1, 3P2 and 3P3. So how will they be labeled in the Q arm? They will go as 3q1, 3q2, 3q3, 3q4 and 3q5. If you look at these regions under a higher magnification, you will see alternating light and dark areas within these regions also. They are called chromosomal bands. So this is region 3P2 and if we consider the bands within 3P2 region, they are labeled as 3P21, 1 and 3P22 bands. Then if you further magnify these bands, you will be able to see alternating light and dark areas within these bands also. They are called subbands. If we consider these subbands within the 3P22 band, they are labeled as 3P221 and 3P222 subbands. Now can you understand the location of the p53 gene? It's on 17th chromosome, the p arm, the first region, the third band and the first subband. Now let's look at the structure of a gene. Generally Human genes contain alternating coding areas and non-coding areas. Coding areas are called exons and non-coding areas are called introns. They are labeled from 5 prime end to 3 prime end as exon 1, 2, 3, 4 and introns also as 1, 2, 3, 4. What you are seeing here is the structure of the P53 gene. How many exons are there? There are 11 exons starting from E1 to E11. Then how many introns are there? There are 10 introns starting from intron 1 to intron 10. Now can you understand the meaning of this statement? P53 mutations predominantly occur in exons 4 to 9. Yes, that means most of the P53 mutations occur in E4, E5, E6, E7, E8 and E9 regions. Well, now you know how to tell the location of a gene on a chromosome and also how to tell the location of a mutation on a gene. So it's time for us to learn some scientific terms 
needed to explain about genes. So what is an allele? The genes can exist in a population in several versions. The different versions of the same gene are called alleles. Generally, we have two alleles of the same gene in our genome. We receive one of them from our mother and the other one from our father. They are located on the same locus of the homologous chromosomes we receive from our parents. If the two alleles are identical, we say that the individual is homozygous for that particular gene. And if the two alleles are different, we say that the particular individual is heterozygous for that gene. If we consider about this person, he is homozygous for the gene A and D and heterozygous for the gene B. Then, if an allele is normal, it's called the wild type allele and if it carries a mutation or an abnormality, then it's called the mutant allele. So, what are dominant and recessive alleles? If one allele can mask the effect of the other allele of the same gene, we call it the dominant allele. Usually, we write the dominant alleles in capital letters. Dominant alleles can determine the phenotype both in the homozygous state and the heterozygous states. So what is a recessive allele? The allele which is masked by the effect of the dominant allele of the same gene is called the recessive allele. Usually recessive alleles are written in simple letters. It can determine the phenotype only in the homozygous state. In the heterozygous state, the recessive allele's effect is masked by the effect of the dominant allele. Now, let us look at the difference between genotype and phenotype. In western populations, there are two versions of the same gene to determine the eye color. How do you call these two versions? We call them alleles. The capital B allele is responsible for brown eyes and the simple B allele is responsible for blue eyes. Different people will have different combinations of these two alleles in their genome. If they are having capital B and capital B combination, they will definitely have brown eyes because capital B is the dominant allele. If they are having capital B and simple B combination, still they will have brown eyes because the capital B is the dominant allele and it can mask the effect of the recessive allele. In this case, the both alleles are simple B and simple B, that means recessive alleles, but they are in the homozygous state. So this individual will have blue eyes. So alleles of a gene responsible for a physical characteristic is called the genotype. So these are the genotypes of the three individuals. In this case, it's capital B, capital B. In this case, it's capital B, simple B. And in this case, it is simple B, simple B. 
and the physical characteristics resulting from expression of these alleles is called the phenotype. In this case, brown eyes is the phenotype. In this case, again, brown eyes is the phenotype. And in this case, it's blue eyes. Finally, let's look at the functions of genes. Genes can store information for protein and RNA synthesis. These proteins and RNA molecules can control the cells as well as the entire organism. Not only that, the genes can transmit the genetic information for the next generation of cells or next generation of organisms. That is why the wounds you create during surgeries heal with the genetic information in existing cells. And that is why we all who started our life as a single cell could be eventually developed into a very complex organism with several billions of cells. And certain genetic mutations can help us to adapt to the environmental changes also. The best example I can give you is antibiotic resistance in bacteria. When bacteria are exposed to antibiotics, they change their genes and learn to survive in antibiotics containing environments without any problem. That brings us to the end of the lesson on structure and functions of DNA.